Good morning, brothers and sisters in the Dhamma. Today we have Dr. Ang Bing Chu who will be talking about uh, Have You Encountered Ghosts? But before that, let us pay homage to the uh, Buddha, uh, Triple Gem. Arahang Samma Sambuddho Bhagawa Buddhang Bhagawantang Abhivademi Swakato Bhagawata Dhammo Dhammang Namasami Supatipano Bhagavato Sawaka Sango Sangang Namami Preliminary homage to the Buddha Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Going for refuge Buddhang Saranang Gachami Dhammang saranang gachami Sangang saranang gachami Dutiyampi buddhang saranang gachami Dutiyampi dhammang saranang gachami Dutiyampi sangang saranang gachami Tatiyampi buddhang saranang gachami Tatiyampi dhammang saranang gachami Tatiyampi sangang saranang gachami Let's take the five precepts Panati pata veramani sikha padang samadhyami Adinadana veramani sikha padang samadhyami Kame sumichachara veramani sikha padang samadhyami Musavada Veramani Sikha Padang Samadhyami Sura Meraya Maja Pamadatana Veramani Sikha Padang Samadhyami Recollection of the Buddha Let us recollect the sublime qualities of the Buddha Itipiso Bhagava Arahang Samma Sambuddho Vijjacharana Sampano Sugato Loka Vidu Anuttaro Purisa Dhamma Sarati Satta Deva Manu Sanang Buddha Bhagavati Let us recollect the sublime qualities of the Dhamma Swakato Bhagavata Dhammo Sandittiko Akaliko Ehipasiko Opanaiko Pachat Tang Veditabo Vinuhiti. Let us recollect the sublime qualities of the Sangha. 
Sufati Pano Bhagavato Sawaka Sango Ujupati Pano Bhagavato Sawaka Sango Nyaya Pati Pano Bhagavato Sawaka Sango Sami Chipati Pano Bhagavato Sawaka Sango Yadidang Chatari Purisa Yugani Atta Purisa Pugala Esa Bhagavato Sawaka Sango Ahuneyo, pahuneyo, dakineyo, anjali karaniyo Anuttarang punyaketang lokasati Sadu, sadu, sadu Okay, we will invite Dr. Ang Beng Chu to give us the talk now. Good morning, brothers and sisters in the Dharma. Happy 7th Lunar Yid Month. During the COVID-19, the 14 days quarantine here and 14 days quarantine there. In between, there are only two days left for our good brothers. Besides, there's no big scale of offering in this month due to the lockdown. So, no portal, no dinner for good food, no wayang show for entertainment, no ge thai. Besides, people burn less money. Less paper money, of course, not the, the real money. Nah. Less paper money due to recession. The income may not be enough to pay for their quarantine stay and traveling expenses. Thus, goals may be absent this year. <laughs> but I'm also, but I'm still told to give a talk on goals. And then talking about this topic. I'm very frightened until I got diarrhea last night. <laughs> so, the first question we want to ask is that, are there ghosts in this world? Some people say yes, some say no. But according to Buddhism, there are six realms, and ghost realm is one of them. And to some research, ghost realm is occupying the same space but different dimension with us. So ghosts may be now standing on our head or sitting on our laps. But still, we, we, we do not notice it, although we do not notice it. Why some can see ghosts and some can't? What is the reason? Most people can't see them. But some do. Why? According to some researchers, this world is like a television. Everyone has a remote control in hand. For those who practice meditation up to a certain level, they know how to use a remote control so they can see the channel of each realm. But for those of us, many of us, who do not know how to use it, so we just throw it anywhere. And accidentally, we may sit on it or may stand, stand on, step on it. And suddenly, the ghost channel show up. And then we will say, ah, ghost. And the ghost sees us, they may say, ah, human being. So we frighten them, they frighten us. And what is the reason? 
since though they, we are, they are frightened of us, we are frightened of them. We are frightened of them, and they are frightened of us because when they see us, they need to spend a lot of energy. And we are afraid of them, we are frightened of them. Why? For two reasons. First one, because they are invisible. I asked many of my university friends, I asked them, what was the things you were most frightened of, afraid of? And all their answers were ghosts. Why? Because they are invisible. And you do not know when they will appear. I asked my artist friend, what was the easiest things to draw? They answered, ghosts. As nobody knows how they look like. So I can draw anything what I like. I asked my writer friends, the easiest thing to describe? They said, ghosts. Because I can describe their appearance and their character as I like. No wonder the popular Chinese ghost novels, Liao Zai, all ghosts have human appearance and have human characters. The first thing, they are invisible. You don't know how they look like. Probably they are sitting among us. Who knows? The second one is wrong concepts. During the childhood time, when we were young, we were kids. Adults used ghosts to threaten us for their own convenience or control sick. They said, if you are naughty, if you are noisy or ghost anywhere without letting us know and you go alone, ghosts will grab you. Be careful. Ghosts appear in dark place. We could not imagine what a ghost looked like. But our fears arouse from the sound the adult make. When we go out at, at a dark place, they couldn't find us, then they'll say, yeah. And actually, we do not know. The ghost, <coughs> yeah, but the adults, yeah, frighten us. My mother trained me, because my mother knows that I love chocolate. So she trained me to light up a candle light, a candle in my bedroom while it is dark. And if I'm able to light up the candle at night, I will have a chocolate. And this is how they train me. And during a week, normal night sitting, eh? normally we children during my time were asked to help watching, taking care of the can of the coffin. And sometimes the adults were anxious that we might go out and play. So they told us, take care. Don't let a cat jump over the body. Otherwise, the dead body will turn into a vampire and suck your blood. So we were afraid of the dead body and we dare not go near. But my mother purposely chased a cat, jumped over my grandmother's dead body to show me that a cat is too small to pull up a dead person. So when we were at a childhood, we were frightened by our adults. And when we grown up, the concept inculcated during the childhood plus the ghost story. We, every one of us love to listen to ghost story. No matter how, how frightened we are, but we still like to hear. And during my time, normally the ghost story was told under the kerosene lamp and up to very exciting uh, passage. Then the storyteller will just pass around and tell you that put in money, 10 cents, otherwise no continue. Then we have to put in our money. 
but we still love to listen to the ghost story. And then if we can, when we can read, we read ghost novels. And we go and watch the ghost movie. Many of us like to watch ghost movie. I don't know whether you like it. And during my time, we went to the cinema to watch the ghost movie. And then we like to look, but we dare not also. So this is why we cover our eyes uh, with our fingers open. So that is the, the thing. And this is how we were trained during our grown up time. My mother told, told us that dead body will not harm us or bring us back luck. When passing by a week, no need to be afraid. Chant quietly and transfer merit to the dead. This would build up friendship between us and the dead in future. So they will not harm us. And in future, they will be our friends. And this could be correct. Because now I have many young friends. And another thing is that we are afraid, every one of us are afraid of death because we do not know where we will go. It is just like being kidnapped or hijacked. We do not know where we are going. Actually, every one of us are experiencing death every night. When we wake up in the morning, it is a new day. When we wake up from the death, it is a new life no matter where we are. Our parents will be surrounding us, waiting for us to arrive. Looking at all the babies, it's the same. But the babies are afraid, so they cry. Ah! But the parents looking at them and say that, Wah! cry very loudly, eh? strong lung. So there shouldn't be any fears. And now I would like to talk about the tab taboo, about the taboo in the seventh lunar month. Probably you all have heard about it. First thing, not going out on the eve of the first day of the seventh lunar month. Because that will be the time, the gap, because about 12 o'clock, then midnight, the gate of the hell will be opened. And the, all the ghosts will have one month holiday. They will rush up from the hell. And then if we go out at night, once they bang onto us, we will have bad luck. That's the thing. First one, not going out. And on the eve, of the first, first day of uh, July lunar month, okay? Uh, seven lunar month. Second, not to get married. Why? Because they are afraid that once you get married, the ghost will follow the bride to the groom's place and it will cause a happy marriage into an unhappy one. Number three, don't go and buy a house because the ghost will affect your way of thinking and affect the house so that you may buy a wrong one. Number four, don't move house because they say that every house, there is a house guard. House guard, we can't see them. And they will only allow the family member to go in and out. Outsider, the ghost cannot enter. But during the seven lunar month, if we move house, then the ghost will join us halfway and move to the house and they become our house guests. So they can go in and out anytime they want to. They can join us. And then another thing is that don't have operation 
or if possible, don't see a doctor during the seven lunar month. Otherwise, you may have problem. True or not true, I do not know. But some of my doctor friends told me that they have less patience. I do not know whether you cancel your appointment in, in the lunar, uh, seven lunar month. And some even say that don't have a funeral. That means you cannot die in, in the first, in the seven lunar month. Because no, when there's a funeral, the ghost may tear the dead body into pieces and eat them. And they say that in July, in the, not July, in the seven lunar month, there are more people die in that month. But I remember that many years ago, I went to check in the birth and death department. And I saw that every month is more or less the same. Uh, the seven lunar month is not especially more. And then they tell us that Last day, the last day of the month, you better stay at home and do more chanting and, or prayer to avoid being caught wrongly, wrongly to the hell. Mm. Besides, people during the month, people worship them, worship the ghost with food and entertainment, entertain them with performance. We normally see when you go to the big dinner, the port or dinner, you normally see an empty table. Nobody is supposed to sit there. That's left for them. And then you go and see the performance. Normally the first row or first and second row were empty. I remember at one time I didn't know. I wanted to sit and then they shouted, no, not for you. So I thought it's for VIP. Later I saw that it was empty. That's for them. And they also dare not address them as ghosts. So they address them as good brothers. Ho hyati. Actually, what is the facts? What is the origin meaning of the seven lunar month? That is the month to practice filial party. We all know that. The Buddha has a disciple by the name as Mongolala, Mongolana. So his, her, his mother loved to eat turtles and kill a lot of them. So he advised the mother not to do so. And also share with the mother the teaching of the Buddha. The mother was very angry and then condemned the Buddha. When she passed away, she was sent to a hungry ghost realm due to her bad karma. Mongolala wanted to see where the mother has gone to. At last, he found that the mother was in the hungry ghost realm. So he went down and see that the mother has very thin throat and very big tummy. Poor thing, she suffered in hunger. So Mongolala wanted to feed her Sweet her with food. When she opened her mouth, fire come out and burn the food into ashes. And Mongolana gave her the drinks. And when the drink go near her mouth, it turned into iron liquid. So she couldn't take anything. Mongolana didn't know what to do. And he went to Buddha for advice. The Buddha taught him that, asked the mother to repent. And then, at the same time, Mongolana offer, do the offering to the Arahat on, her mother's, on his mother's uh, behalf. And because due to this, the mother and her being were free from the hell on the 15th the 15 day of the seven lunar month. This is why it is a very good month that they practice filial party. Second one 
is that we all know for monks, normally they have three months rainy season retreat. And after the retreat, they have to report to their teachers about their progress. So during Buddha's time, it started this practice. And this is why it is to the Buddha. It is a happy month because all the disciples, they report about their progress to show respect to their teacher. Teacher is very happy. So this is a month that to show respect to the teacher. Like this year, our Singapore's Teacher's Day is on the 4th of September. Every year it falls in this month too, to respect the teacher. And it is also the month to treasure friendship. We all know poor people from China came to work in Singapore. Females are addressed as Samsui women. They have their uniform. Men, male are called Guri. They all also wear the, the, the blue colors uh, uniform. And all these people, they're separate. Male and female, they stay in different quarters. For male, they stay where they stay is called Guri Gang. And since they come to Singapore alone, they came to Singapore alone, they stay together. And they address each other, good brothers. They are like own brothers. And when one of them pass away, their friends carry out the funeral and prepare food to worship them. To show that even their own family members were not around, they were not lonely. This is a valuable friendship. And when more and more men laborers came to Singapore, the good brothers could not afford to worship individual friends. So a suitable date in that month was chosen to worship friends die in that month. Slowly, they extended it from known to unknown and combine all. But they could not choose a suitable date and a month. This is why they choose a day in that year, suitable day in that year for every one of them who pass away. So this one was carried out for the death and the dinner were prepared to serve for the participants. Since there are too many names to be remembered, so all of them are called good brothers. According to the above, good thoughts are given, good deeds are planted, and good things are happening during the seventh lunar month. How could it be a bad month? So now we will talk about who will become ghost? I don't think any one of us want to become ghost. So who will become ghost? First one, those who are attached to the loved ones. I remember that one time, a friend told me, her sister-in-law, after death, still buy food for her nephew, the baby nephew. And every night they saw the sister-in-law brought things over. Cannot let go because after she gave birth to the baby, she passed away. And every night they saw her coming back. And in my family, things also happened in such a way. One of my uncle was very filial to my grandmother. So when my uncle passed away, every early in the morning, he knows that my, my grandmother will open the, the back door towards the garden. And he will be sitting on the chair, the stone chair, 
there waiting for to see my grandmother. And every time my grandmother saw him, and my grandmother was so happy. But every time when we open the door, the, we never see him. Very interesting. Only to my grandmother. I do not know why. And I was told that you know, one time, a couple got married in a church. And the bride kept on waiting for the groom to come to turn up. But waited and waited, waited for quite a long time. At last, the groom turned up, however, full of blood. So they cleaned his blood. And then they carry on with the marriage. After carrying on with the marriage, and then they go in the car and they drive away. So halfway, they saw a car accident, which has an accident. And then suddenly, the groom in the car disappeared. So they went down. It, because the, the groom in the car disappeared and running towards the car, which was having accident, and going in. And they saw that actually the, the groom, with all blood, passed away already there. And because he wanted to keep his promise, so he went to the church to get married with the wife. Attachment to love. This is why some monks advise us not to cry when our loved one passes away. It will keep them staying back and become house ghosts. And family members are afraid of them, although they are your loved ones. But when they become ghosts and then, and then no, just walking around us, you will also get frightened. So then they will get religious teachers to chase them away. This will make them living sadly or angrily. And this will cause them bad karma. This is why it is better for us when we, our loved one passes away, we better don't cry, but just do chanting and transfer the merit to them. It will help them. Actually, all of us, we have been reborn for so many, many, many times. Can we remember who were the loved one, our loved one in the past life? We couldn't. And who will be our loved one in our future life? We also do not know. And if that is the case, should we let go of them when we or they pass away in this life? Our loved ones. Should we let our loved one let go of our loved one when they pass away or we pass away? In this life? Sure. Because we have good relationship with them, in future we will meet again. So don't worry about it. And the attachment, some people are attached to work. Not only loved one, attached to work. I remember that one time when I was in the hospital, staying in the hospital. Then during the midnight, a nurse came to me and said that injection today. I said, no. The doctor didn't mention that I need to have injection at night. And she said, is, is it? No. Eh? I said, yeah, no. Then he said, okay, I will check. And then when I pressed the button, wanted, okay, then I say that, okay, I check with another one. Then I press the button and she just go to the wall, the door and disappear. And when the other nurse heard my pressing the button, she came in and she told me, what happened? She asked me, what happened? I said, a nurse just now came and saying that want to do an injection for me. And she said, ah, she turned up again. I got a shock. And later, slowly, I found out that actually, that one was a very good nurse and she was very responsible. However, she passed away already. Still carry, come back and carry, her, carry out her duty. And I remember that Ajahn Brahm talked about one Thai doctor in the lift, remember? Uh, in the lift and saw the the patient who passed away and the nurse who passed away. So this is why. And then he said, uh, Ajahn Brahm said, uh, the Thai doctor uh, saw them and saw the nurse. 
and saying that, oh, the, the patient who passed away, so where the red, red tray, uh, those who passed away, and then the doctor looked at the nurse said, you are also wearing it. And the nurse said, oh, that means I also die. Eh? And both of them disappeared and the doctor fainted in the lift. So when the lift, the door opened, the doctor, they found that the doctor was there. And one of my friends, they bought a house. And in the house, when she, he told me that when he was a student, so he st studied in the, in the room. And she, he found that, hey, how come uh, there was somebody, you know, she feel, she feel that somebody was watching, looking at her. And she looked up, that was a strange man. And then she shouted, ah! And this man disappeared. And later they found out that actually that was a professor's house. And this professor committed suicide in that room. And after that, the parents quickly sold the house. And in my office, last time my office, uh, it was a haunted office, very popular. It was a haunted office. And one time, the first time is that um, we always see ghosts in that in that place. This is why we are very used to it already, to use, very used to them. And the first time, one of my colleagues, uh, she worked quite late, about nine something, and she went back, and everybody went back already. So she went down the staircase, because her office was in the second level, and she went down the staircase, and she saw that one room with the light, the light is still on. So second day, she told my assistant, Wow, I thought that I was working late. Another person worked even later. And my assistant said, are you sure? Then he said, yes, the light was on that, in that room. But my assistant said that room was not, has not been located late, allocated late. He said, no, nah, don't frighten me, you. And he came, she, she quickly came to see me and asked me. So I said, yeah. The room has not been allocated yet. And she didn't want to believe. So I brought the key and went down with her and to check the room. And the room, when we opened the room, the room has no chair, no table, nothing on. But she said the light was on, so I on the light. She said, eh, how come? Ah? Today the light is yellow. Yesterday it was green, lay. And from then onwards, she refused to work late. It's very interesting. And one thing is that, you know, because when they know that you were afraid of them, sometimes they come and then they are naughty, playful. So they come and then you know, frighten you, pray, pray like that. I remember that uh, several of my staff there all saw. Uh, and then they told me, they said, hey, you better don't work too late. So I say, it's okay lah. Never mind lah. Why worry? So one, one day, I was supposed to go back because they all say that you better go back before six. And if it rains, rainy day, go back at about five. So I say, okay lah. And the day was raining. And my husband was supposed to pick me up. But until six something, he still hasn't turned up. So my assistant said, how you want me to accompany you or not? I said, look at your, your face, it's so pale, you better go home. Nah. Then he said, that, are you sure? I said, yeah, never mind, it's okay, it's okay. You lock the door downstairs. Okay, she, she said, okay, then I leave. Huh? You will be alone, you know. I said, okay, okay, never mind, never mind. So I, was, I keep on writing, doing my work. And suddenly I feel that there's somebody coming near. So I look up, Bolang, then maybe, you know, so I told myself, maybe because I work too hard, that's why. Illusion. Then I walk, walk, walk. Then somebody coming nearer, I look up, Bo. So I told myself, never mind. This time, if he comes, then I will not look at him, only communicating with my brain. So I do that. And then I saw some, somebody in white coming near to my table, standing there. And I just communicate with him. 
I say that, don't just look. Please help me. I have a lot of work to be finished today. So, if you are kind enough, I work during the daytime, you work during the night time. How about that? And with your cooperation, with your help, probably I can finish my work earlier. Immediately disappear, lazy ghost. <laughs> Later, I found out that no wonder. You know why? Because my place was during Japanese occupation time, that was their headquarter. So because they're Japanese, they cannot read English. Understandable lah. Uh, not because they are lazy. So, and then no, uh, my assistant and Clark and the typist, very interesting is that every time when they leave the office, the first time they were very frightened. Then later I told them that they are not afraid already. They saw somebody, two person, in Japanese soldier, you know, the soldiers, uh, uh, this uniform, and walking there. So they told me, they said, hey boss, uh, do you know that uh, the, the, the media cop is coming here, you know? They came here to take some series or something like that. I said, oh, is that true? He said, yeah. So I said, okay, I go down with you and have a look. So I went down and he went down. And nothing was boring. So probably, you know, those people are carrying out their gardener. Uh, they are very hardworking. This is why. We have to tell ourselves, when we pass away, our work will be taken over by another person. So don't need to worry and come back and clear the work. So this is very, very important. And some people are attached to the material wealth. Like last time, uh, my, my cousin brother's house. So they have to tear it down. Because before that, oh, there is always a person staying in the place at night, walking here and walking there. And they couldn't chase the person away. And later they get medium or something like that to, 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 to check and telling them that because this house was built by the person and he passed away already, he cannot let go. And this is why they have to tear down the whole house and rebuild because attached to the material's wealth. Mm. And some people attached to hatred. My office ghost definitely should be because they will be ill-treated. They would they were ill-treated during the Japanese occupation period. And when they pass away, then they always appear there. So many of my staff saw them, and sometimes the, the, the typewriter can ta -ta 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 by itself. And one time when we came back from lunch, and then I saw the typist looking at that with a clock. And then ta -ta 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 -ta. I came in and I said, what's, what's wrong? And then the typing stopped, and they jumped up. So they said, the, type, the typewriter typed by itself. I said, never mind, uh, probably they want to tell us something. Uh. Put in the white paper, so I put in the white paper. <laughs> but it stopped there, boy. They, they, they didn't type already. They don't want to type already. Uh, very interesting. So actually, we are very afraid of all this. Why should we be afraid of? Actually, that's all their karma and their hatred and their, all this and the mistake they have made. So why should we use other people's mistake to frighten ourselves, to punish ourselves with fears? There's no point. And I remember that, you know, if we have, we have done certain bad things, the karma came to us. A friend, I have a friend, who was Singaporean, but working in Hong Kong in an international corporation. I always use this story. And then every time when she, he came back to Singapore, he will buy us 
lunch or dinner. And if we have six person, seven person or eight person, he will always order 10 course dinner for us. And we couldn't finish. So I tell him, I say, don't waste food. Don't worry, don't worry. This is my entertainment fee. So you all just eat. Bochak. And if you don't want, you feel that this is no good, then we reorder. So I told him, no, no, no. And one time he came back and he told all of us, hey, today we have six, seven of us, no? So we order seven dishes, la. huh? Or six. And then if not enough, we reorder. La. And everybody say, okay, okay, okay. Nobody dare to ask questions. And you know that I was trained to ask questions by my father. So I asked that, how come uh, last time you were, be gen you were so generous and this time so stingy? Last time you always gave us 10 course dinner or lunch. But this time, why only six or seven dishes? Ayah, you don't know. Nah. You know, my, my sister passed away in a car accident. And my mother said that he doesn't, she doesn't leave behind any words. So I wanted to get the media in Hong Kong to get her soul up to talk to us and see what happened. And I don't believe in that. So I told my mother, if the chap can bring me up, bring me down to see my sister, then I will believe. Mm -hmm. And since that in Hong Kong, there is a chap who can bring up and who can bring down. So the mother brought her, him there. And then he sit down and they do, he, because he told me, I do not know what type of chanting, no? And then she couldn't understand and they asked him to close his eyes. Suddenly he feel that, wow, very strong wind. And he wanted to open his eyes, he couldn't. And for a while, then he saw that in front of him, it was very bright and he saw the sister. The sister was eating. Keep on eating, 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 and perspiring like mad. So he asked the sister, Sis, sis, what are you doing? And the sister didn't ignore him until he asked for the fourth time. The sister answered impatiently, Don't you see me eating? Yeah, I see you eating. But you know, when people eat, people enjoy. But why? You are not enjoying. How can I enjoy? Don't you see that there are so many tanks in front of me? Wow. Then he looked wow, in front of her table. There are so many tanks with food. And the sister said, I have to clear all the food which I wasted there. Mm -hmm. And then he, he looked at the sister. He said, poor sister, poor sister, let me help you to finish some. And the sister said, no need, that, no need, that. yours are there. Wow, even bigger tank with more, more food. Then he told us, he said, Alama, you think I dare to waste more food? I better not, better not. There are so many waiting for, for me. And then one of us, among us, one of us said, No, na, your religion, uh, 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 their religion no, believe in that. La. Ours go directly up to the heaven. Then he said, hey, Don't forget, uh, my sister and you come from the same place. No? He said, oh yeah, huh? Then he said, have to clear. Uh, after clearing, then you can go up. Uh, uh. <laughs> so all of us, from then onward, we dare not. We dare not waste food anymore. Mm -hmm. mm. And then one time my cousin went for a meditation retreat in a forest. And after three days of the retreat, and she wanted to, she wanted to leave. So, the monk asked her, why you want to leave? And he said that every time, when I sit properly, and I, I sit still, and when I went into the deep meditation, I saw a woman who came with the hand and the leg crossed each other, and then, you know, as if she's suffering, and suddenly, blood poured out from her mouth. And I was so frightened. So I don't want to continue with the meditation. And then the monk told her, this is a good time for you to learn. Why? He 
You see, you later afternoon session, you go in again, and then when you see her, ask her why she has reached such a stage. And my cousin asked, and this lady answered, because she committed suicide. And then later, when my cousin came out from the meditation, and the monk asked her, and my cousin answered, and the monk said that, yes, because committing suicide is not only taking off your life. Your body comes from your parents. So you want to condemn it. You should ask the permission from your parents, but you don't. So you're stealing the body. Secondly, you commit suicide. You are also killing. That is the first precept. And then, if you continue practice, you will become a Buddha. So you are killing a Buddha. The third, bad karma. So for suicide commit, suicide deed. This is why, how my cousin learned and came back and told all of us. So no matter how difficult the life is, no matter how bad we suffer, actually we are paying our debts, our bad karma before we, we have done. So we pay, just pay it willingly, paying the debts. Then it will be okay. When all the things pay, we will be good again. And what is the reason for the ghost to appear? Sometimes they are requesting for help. Human realms is the only realm that could practice Dharma for enlightenment as well as to share merit and help other realms. I remember that in the 1970s, in SBF, Singapore Buddhist Federation, they carried out the first transfer marriage service at the present Manjushri Secondary School. During that time, Manjushri Secondary School was just built not long during that time. So at the opening day, opening ceremony, wow, there are many people turned up. And the VIP, guest of honour, was our ex-Prime Minister, Mr. Lee Kuan Yew. And the building structure could take more than the weights at the time. Second day, there are only those people who pray, who do the prayer to their ancestor and their relatives who pass away. So the number is about one, one six, one six of the first day's, uh, first day's number. So when the repent chief monk, Venerable Yutan, was standing in front and leading all to do the repent, and at the time, he also asked all the past, those who pass away to come and then do the repent because their family member and their relatives did for them. And when it started, after he, 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 he asked them to come in and all do it, suddenly we were there seeing not many people, but you no, know, from the entrance, from the entrance, and you can see that you know, there is the, the floor crack from the entrance up to the back of the monk, where the monk stand. Everybody was so shocked when we were there. And then, structure engineer were brought in to do the survey. And structure engineer said that, oh, structure no problem, but the floor carried overweight. Very funny, but not many people later found out that actually those dead people also got weight. Mm -hmm. 
they say when you then then you they go and search for the research and they found that when a person pass away he is about um one third he lose his weight huh? a dead person lose weight one third ounce than when he was alive is it because of that so is it too heavy do nobody knows and sometimes they appear if they are asking for help that one was asking for merit for repent for merit and the other type is asking for help one of my former professor he is now still teaching in university of hawaii last time i invited him to singapore to to uh, to 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 train the buddhist studies a teacher and he told us when he stayed in the hotel suddenly he saw in his room he saw some ghost turn up and then he told the ghost it's no no use for you to come to me to ask for help because i do not have such a power however you could turn to city go city gava so i will do the chanting for you and you turn to him for help and those ghosts just bow and then sitting there listening and after that bow and go off and he himself saw it and we know that he practiced up to quite a high level so he can see a lot of things and one of my friend uh his niece during that time i was still working his niece was about 3 years old but she is very interesting hmm since young she's able to do all chanting and every evening there are a lot of those ghosts in front of her house waiting for her to do the chanting and spraying the water and she was only 3 years old and he has to, she has to do the chanting and then they ask her why she say no because they waiting so i have to spray water onto them very interesting because i i do not know whether it's a girl's imagination or it's true and sometimes the ghost ghost um appear is due to confrontation they have human relish since they have human character they do not like to be interfere insulted or cheated so one time ah uh, i remember that my cousin i have several cousin who are very naughty so this cousin uh, went to the tomb and so they bet on each other who dare to urine onto the tomb and my this cousin say bet la i can la one lunch la so he really stood on it and after that he came back he was having high fever and went to see the doctor never cure until later my grandmother said you better go and apologize and he went to apologize and after apo- apologies and he was okay and from then onward he said never never touch them and other things that you know, if the you insult the 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 this one uh my one time my aunt was very angry with the ancestors and he said that the ancestor ha huh, never never uh, protect her never never let her um touch her for this never never let her win in her gambling so so he told my grandmother and to all of us saying that that us throw them away she pointing at the tablet and when she pointed at the tablet and she suddenly her hand is like that her eyes are like that. and we thought that the wrong what funny face she want to make and later she slowly she had a fall and then quickly support her and sent to the hospital saying that she had a stroke 
and my maid say, during the time my maid say, see lah, insult the ancestor, no wonder ancestor give her a So, one thing is that if we promise them, we have to carry out our promise. I remember that in last time they say cannot move house in lunar seven months. So, but you know, since they are going to move the office, you cannot tell, you cannot tell the government, no, I do not want to move. Uh. You cannot. So, move. After moving, then I told myself, never mind, I'll do some chanting for them. So in my office, I do the chanting for three days or four days. I promise them to chant for seven days. Then for three days or four days. And then on that day when I came back, fourth day or fifth day, on, I went back to the office. The file was so high. So you know, I quickly do the file and I forgot about the chanting. And then the lights dim and disappear. So I thought that electricity got problem. Then I call, I call my, uh, I call my secretary, and she called the electrical people, electrical department. Anything? Uh? Oh, I thought, I thought it's the time. It's the time for me to stop. No, anytime. It's time for me to stop and put up your hand. Huh? Okay. And then I do the chanting and then I do my work and I forgot the chanting and the light went off. So, electrical technician came in and said that nothing wrong. Leh. Nothing wrong. So, later, he switched on the light and for less than 15 minutes, it was off again. Then I went out to see whether in my assistant's room and all the rooms, yeah, the light was all on. So I came in and switched on again. And then later, less than 10 minutes off again. Suddenly I realized that, oh, I promised them to, uh, to do the chanting. But that day I forgot. So I told them, sorry la, because I so much work. So today I forgot to do the chanting for you. So please be cooperative. If you keep on disturbing, then I cannot finish my work. Once I cannot finish my work, I cannot do the chanting today. So will you please just don't disturb? I think they understand. So they switch on the light for me and never disturb. So I finish my work and I do the chanting and transfer to married to them. They are reasonable. So, Sometimes, you know, they, if we are afraid, the fears, our fears, attract those playful ghosts. And since my, my building, my office building, got ghost, it's haunted, very popular haunted. Before the former NUS department moved away, they told me it's haunted already. So we moved in. And then my boss liked to use my place. I have a very nice meeting room. And she likes to use my meeting room for meeting. And the first time she came, and suddenly, you know, halfway of the meeting, she heard about ha 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 he people laughing. And she said, ask them not to disturb. I said, nobody is disturbing. This is their happy hour. My boss said, who? I said, those people who are here long. Then my boss didn't know. So then he said, go and find. And then they all go. I said, you, you join all and find, then you will know. Joining Wulang, nobody is around, but laughter is, was on. And then after we sit down again, and my boss start the meeting and say that, today we want to talk about da -ra 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 -ra. And the ruler, a pencil on the table, stand up. My boss. And for us, because it's very common to us. So then, from then onward, my boss said, never hold meeting at your meeting place. <laughs> because you know, they know that you are naughty, you, you are afraid of them, or sometimes you, know, you, are, you, are, you are not very good, or too strict, or something like that, then they, they become very playful. And 
one time, they also protect you if you are nice to them. I remember that uh, in, in, in the office, there's one toilet for some of us to use. And one time I had my uh, meeting there, outsider came, and then one of them, you know, halfway through, they rushed out the to she rushed out the toilet with her trousers still you know, halfway through pulling up. And then I asked her, I asked her, the, 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 my assistant, what's wrong? Ayah, she said somebody talked to her, she ran away. So I asked the chap, I said, really, uh, you heard somebody talk to you? Yeah, when I was inside. And the person said that, this is not your toilet, you are not supposed to use, you are supposed to use the downstairs one. They can protect you, no? And make sure that we do not have bad habits. Otherwise, the, it will attract them also. I remember one time my friend passed away. And then during, I do not know, now, now they don't do this. Huh? Last time, when you are having a night sitting, huh, they are mahjong table. For those people to play mahjong, now no. Huh? Now no, it seems no, no such thing. Then, so her friends play mahjong there. And during the night sitting, and halfway through, they find that, hey, how come one more hand joining? And they look up, what's the, the dead person? She was supposed in the, in the coffin, how come she was there? And they saw the ghost. And then from then onward, nobody dared to play mahjong at her, at her wig. And sometimes you know, our suspicions will also create ghosts. One time, you know, when it was uh, uh, it rains heavily, and somebody was at the, I think at a highway or something like that, and then, wow, it was very wet, and he saw that. He tried to ask the car to stop, but no car stopped, and suddenly he saw that there was a car moving slowly, and then stopped, so he quickly opened the door and sit in. Uh, suddenly he see that, hey, how come uh, nobody is driving uh, at the driver's seat, nobody in the car, and he was the only one, and he got a shock. But the cars continue, you know, moving, in, moving, continue moving, until they went out to a, uh, she was very, he was very frightened, he wanted to jump down from the car, but he dared not. So when they reached some place where it's a coffee shop or something like that, and the car stopped, and he went down and to the coffee shop and tell the people that, you know, what he meet. He said, there's nobody, and the car moved by itself. And after since he was telling them this, there are three persons, all wet, coming in, and said, see how just now, the car cannot move, and we are pulling the car, and someone went in, sit in the car, ate in the weight so heavy and then he was the one and he thought that he was in a ghost car and I have a friend who is a scientist staying in Taiwan and during the time we all laughed you know, because at first he didn't know he remarried and after remarried and he found that his his uh, his first wife who passed away the tablet there so when he, every time in the morning, and he pray, and his second wife also pray to the tablet, and they went out to work. But every time when they come home, the tablet turn the face to the back. Doesn't want to face, face them, to the back. And they feel very funny. At last, the second wife was so frightened until she was sick and hospitalized. And one day, this professor came back, wanted to find out why the tablet turned by itself. And then, so that morning, he had no lecture, so he sit there and looking, watching the tablets. And nearby, construction was on. And then, kong, kong, kong. And then, he saw that the tablet jumping, 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 and turned the back. So he said, for nothing, you know, he was, he was afraid. 
for nothing. The second wife was frightened until go hospital because it don't. So when he came to Singapore, he told us about his story and made all of us laugh to death. So sometimes suspicions also. And how to avoid going to the ghost realm? We all know that the Buddha story about a man and his four wives. Correct? So who is the fourth wife? Do you want me to, to say it again? Hmm? A man, the Buddha said, tell a story. A man has four wives. He loved the fourth wife very, very much. And no matter where he goes, he will bring the wife along. He also loved the third wife. He's very proud of the third wife. And every time show her to her relatives and friends. And he's also afraid that one day the, this third wife may disappear with other person. He also loved his second wife. When he has any problem, his second wife will help him to solve the problem. And he, his first wife helped him to take care of his account, to take care of the family, to take care of everything. But he never cared about her and make her become very weak and very, very skinny. One day, this man was sick and the doctor said that he has an incurable disease and he has to prepare for his death. So, this man was very, very worried. And he turned to his fourth wife and said that, I love you so much. Now, I'm going to another world. Will you please accompany me? And the fourth wife said, no, this is a very interesting world. I would like to stay back. You go alone. And he turned to the third wife, he said, this one, got no heart. I love you very much, and I'm also very proud of you. When I go to the other world, will you please go with me? And this third wife said, no, you're very proud of me. Other people will also be very proud of me. So when you pass away, I will remarry. What well, worse? He turned to the second wife. The second wife said, will you, and will, will you go with me? Because if I go to the other world, the other world, and if I have any problems or difficulties, nobody will help me to solve the problem. Will you please go with me? No, I'm so sorry. Although I would like to go, but I can't. I have to take care of the family. And then on top of this, since we are husband and wife, so I will send you to the crematorium. Also, he dare not look at the skinny first wife. But the skinny good wife come to him and say that since we are husband and wife, Wherever and whenever you go, I will follow you. And he grabbed the, he hugged the man, and they passed away together. And the Buddha tells us that every one of us has four wives. And who is the fourth wife? The number four is our body. We never part with our body. Every day when we get up, we brush our teeth, we wash our face, we bring the body everywhere to eat, to enjoy. But when we pass away, the body will not go with us, stay in the coffin. Who is our third wife? Our third wife is our property, our fame, our post, hmm? our work, everything. Okay? So when we are around, we are very proud of it. But when you pass away, this one remarried. Go to other people. Property, go to our family member. Our post or our job, go to our colleagues. And then the fame is no use already. So Remarried. Who is our second wife? Our second wife are our family member, our friends, or even our enemies. Enemies create us problem, and our family member, our friends help us to solve the problem. But when we pass away, the most they can is send us to the crematorium. Who is our first wife? Our first wife is our karma. So we have to take care of our karma and don't make it so skinny and weak. Make it very brown, very nice. So we won't regret when we pass away because we will have a very good, very good bank account. So this karma account book, nobody can change the account. Even you are a first class accountant. What we think, what we speak, 
what we do are all recorded. Good one, good thoughts, good speech, good action, deposit. Bad thoughts, bad speech, bad action, withdrawal. And when you go, balance it up. It will go with us. So, at this, at this life, we were also having, looking at the Karma account book, and we will do. Now, what we are doing, what we are having, what we are getting, it's all based on our karma. And in future, even after we go, where we will be born, also depends on the karma account book. So this word to us, is just like a hotel. Every time when we travel to one place, we stay in the hotel. The hotel people, the hotel's furniture, everything, doesn't belong to us. They, they do not belong to us. It belongs to who? It belongs to the hotel. It's the same as this world. When we come to this world, we come even naked. When we go, the most we wear our dress and go. We cannot bring anything along with us. The only thing is our passport. And then the passport plus our bank account. So we go. This is why it is very, very important for us. Always remember that. This is a stage. Now we are performing the role. Okay? After this role performed, 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 and then after that we finish our responsibility, we go to the backstage. We change another attire. Attire, come back, perform another person. So it's not necessary for us to take things for too, too serious, taking things too serious. And then always remember, what we need to is to take care of our karma account book. The rest are, very, are not important at all. And the other thing is that if we don't want, want to go to ghost ramp, Okay, no attachment, no? We know already, no? This is, a, this is a hotel for us. Secondly, keeping, keep our five precepts. Not to have greed. Like, my friend, sister, keep on eating and eating, keep, take so many things, but cannot finish. So, no point. And no need to have hatred. Because hatred actually is harming us. Hatred actually is a sore, two ways sore. One is to kill others, but one side is to kill ourselves. So no point to kill others and kill ourselves at the same time. So if we do not have greed, do, we keep, do not have hatred, we keep our five precepts, it's, then we have good thoughts, good speech and good actions, I'm sure. We will not go to the ghost ram. And we try to plant good seeds, help instead of harm, harming anybody, and positive energy will rise. So we could avoid to, to make the ghost harm us. And we also could avoid to go to the lower ram. And how to overcome our fears of ghosts? Then we should understand the six stages in life. First one, the lower stages is punishment. And this punishment is to create fear. If you are trained, you are going to train the wild animals, like lion, like tiger. What do you use? Beat them. Let them frighten. And when they see your mistake or something like that, they are afraid. So they will listen to you. So punishment. Second one is reward. You stimulate greed 
so as to control them. First one, create fears so as to control them. Punishment, create fears. Create greed so as to control them. This is why you want the dolphin and all that to perform. You feed them with food. The third stage is a combination of both. Punishment plus reward. This is how you train dogs. They're quite smart. And then fourth stage is the peer pressure. You have this, I also have this. You see, peer pressures. You believe in that religion, I must believe in that religion. You have that branded thing. I must also buy the branded thing. You see, this is the peer, peer pressure. Because you now, peer pressure is that we do not want to be seen as odd. So we want to be the same. And the fifth stage is the social critics. Comment by commented by organizations, society, so as to change the manner and style into an acceptable way. And the higher stage is the sixth stage of the psychological maturity, self-discipline. What the Buddha wants us is to train ourselves to have self-discipline. We know that anybody to punish us to use greed to control us, or no peer influence, or social critics and all that. Not necessary. Because we have the responsibility of our speech, of our behavior. So this one is the higher stage of the mental maturity. And this is what the Buddha wants us to achieve. And in general, People do not ask questions in general and analyze or rationalize, rationalize. Thus, they are easily to be controlled by fear and greed because we don't ask questions. People ask you to do this, ask you, then you just do, listen and do. This is why when I was young, my father taught me Kalama Sutra, but during that time, I do not know Kalama Sutra. I didn't know. When my children were young, I also taught them Kalama Sutra. And Kalama Sutra, I thought that that's a very good uh, teaching of the Buddha. Because he said, do not believe in anything simply. Simply because you have heard it. Do not believe in traditions just because they have been handed down for many generations. And this one, Actually, this one, I have experienced it. I remember that when my mother cooked cook fish, you know, she always cut the fish into two, two parts and then cook it. So I find very funny. So I asked my mom, Mom, why you cook fish, steam fish, you must cook into two? You see, because it's easier to, 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 to be cooked or something like that. My mom said, I don't know. Nah. Grandma, do it, long, so I follow. So, so I, one day I went to my grandma and asked grandma, Grandma, why do you cut the fish into two huh? and then you do it? How do I know? How's your great grandma? Nah? I, luckily, luckily, my great grandma was still alive. You know? So I went to her. I said, Great grandma, why do you? Huh? Every time when you cook fish, you have to chop into two parts. Why? Of course, I chop into two parts because I don't have big plate. What? <laughs> this is why you say, do not believe in tradition just because they have been handed down for many generations. Yes, the fish cooking. Do not believe in anything just because it is spoken by many. Everybody says so. This is rumors. So if you want people to listen, so you say this one to this person, this one to this one, and this one they pass down. This is why one of my colleagues told me, if she wanted the 
all the people there whom she want them to get information. She will only get two or three person in her department and telling her, telling them that this is secret. You better don't tell. And she said that only half a day, the whole whole lot of people whom she wants them to know all got the news already. Because you tell them, no, don't tell them. This is a secret. And then they will tell each other. People like to spread secret, you see. So they tell each other, don't tell, no, this is a secret. Oh, I pass even faster. So this is the skill I learned. And then she said, no need to send any you know, information or anything. You just say that, then it's okay. Do not believe in anything simply because it is found written in your religious book. Yes. Religious book could be wrong. They say, no, no killing. And if they miss the no, that means killing, you know. You have to kill. No stealing, you do not steal. And you do steal. The no disappear. That's very dangerous. This is why. Cannot only say that, oh, this is religious book. So we have to follow strictly. Do not believe in anything, mainly on the authority of your teachers or elderlies. Yes. This one I have also experienced. Because I, one time, Mm, I went to this, uh, the Red Indians group, and they told me that their leader, their leader always, not, and they have any questions, they go to the leader and ask. And one time they asked the leader, they say, first person went to ask, leader, leader, will it be cold during this winter? And the leader say, it will be cold. So you better go and get some branches, keep in your house. And second person, third person, fourth person, everybody says so. And he told these people. Until the tenth person came, and this leader was a bit worried. So he quickly called the broadcasting company because they got experts and asked them, do you know whether it will be cold during the Winter. Okay. And the broadcasting company, the, the person answer and tell him that definitely it will be cold. Why? What is the reason? Don't you see that all those red Indians collecting all the branches? <laughs> so where is the thing come from? The authorities. So the Buddha said, only after observation and analyze, when you find anything, agrees with reason and is conducive to the good and benefit of one and other, then accept it and live up to it. So we have to analyze it and then see whether it agrees with reason and is conducive to good and benefit of one and all. Not only reason. This is in Anguttara Nikaya, Volume 1. So, this one, since I was young, my, my father taught this one. And my father didn't tell me this. My father told me, do you want to be smart? Yes, of course, we want to be smart as kids. If you want to be smart, you have to ask questions. Ask what? Ask what? Ask who? Ask what? Then all the six of you. And because of this, my father had seen me, you know, scolded by my teacher, scolded by a lot of people. So those senior people, ah, and when I was young. But you know, okay lah. Now I keep on asking questions and I learn. So we also, we ask the six W's. What are the six W's? What is it? Who is he? Where do they go? When is it? What and how? Why and how? So when you have this one, you will not be controlled by any superstitious teaching which fall into stage one to five. So we observe the situation. When we ask a question, not only ask a question and get the answer, you have to look at the, listen to the answer 
and observe also. Otherwise, it's no use. Asking questions is no use. Observe, and then when it agrees, and analyze the answer with reason and is conducive to the good and benefit of one and other, then accept it and live up to it. So, only when we apply compassion with wisdom, we are able to plant good seeds to help instead of harming others. Then our positive energy will rise and no ghost friend will we go to and no ghost will come and harm us. Thank you. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. The few people Any here. Any questions? Any questions to the few people who are uh, in this hall? No question means no whether que I confuse you or convince you. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you, Dr. Ang, for a very entertaining uh, um, story as well as Dharma sharing. Actually, I have many stories. My, yes. my office is a haunted one. So we have been living with them for many years. Yes, she has more stories. <laughs> I think may scare off some people. <laughs> but it's okay, you know, they're very nice people, you know. Ah, they're very nice. You are nice to them. It's two-way traffic always. No matter they are ghosts or they are human beings. Two-way traffic. If you're nice to them, they are nice to you. Ah, they will not harm you. Mm, they will not harm you. For nothing, they will not harm you. Mm. Especially if we keep our precepts, right? Yeah. Yeah. And especially, you know, you always do, do the chanting or meditation and you transfer merit. They are very happy with you. You are their friends. So don't worry. Don't worry. Dr. Wang, I have a question. What would you suggest if we go to a strange place, first time, alone, and then suddenly we encounter this kind of situation? Who should start first? If you look at the ghost, you know, facing each other, both got stunned. And then, what, what is your reaction we should adopt? If you see them first, is it? Or they see you? Both see each other. Both see each other. Never mind, just say hello. Lo. <laughs> Every time when I go to the hotel, then I will say, hello everyone. Then I say, disturb, disturb. Sorry yeah, to disturb you, but however, I have to stay here. Otherwise, I've got no place to stay. Uh, so sorry yeah, to disturb you. So let me have a, a good sleep tonight. Uh, I will tell them, just like telling friends, uh, let me have a good sleep tonight because tomorrow I have to work. <laughs> and they really cooperate. No? Uh. So not, not screaming. Huh? And you see your ring. <laughs> no need to ah. Nah. Because uh, when you see your friend, you are or not? You don't ah. Nah. Because if your friend, you know them, you are so familiar with their look. But this one, let's say, supposing if his, his look is horrible. I don't think they will look horrible, you know. But you were saying that uh, just now, this one because uh, died because of committing suicide. Yeah, because that one is in the meditation, then you see. But normally, they will not show up to show you because you know why? Unless they request for help or confronting. Otherwise, they will not show up. You know why? According to those research, they say that they will own, once they show up, they will they will uh, waste a lot of uh, their energy and it will help them going down more. So they do not want, want unless there is a need. So don't worry. I, I heard about it. Mm -hmm. huh? I didn't ask them. <laughs> and then when, when I was in the ghost realm, then I cannot remember already. Uh, and this life, I don't know where I will be going, so don't know yet. This is why all this because you know, I like to read certain research in this, this thing. And this is why I read some research. And it's quite interesting. They say that 
Ghosts were oh, we will only see ghosts. Some people say midnight, 12 o'clock. Then according to that research, they say, no, only 3 o'clock. Daytime, 3 o'clock. Or nighttime, 3 o'clock. Because you know why? They say because our energy was down during that time. True or not true, I have no idea. I think Arjun Brom says, if you see, you just interview them. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> I ask them, how are you? Hey, how is the life there? Huh? Good or no? Huh? Yeah. It will be very interesting. Mm. And then if you can record them down, even better. <laughs> yes? Oh, now, get going. Uh, thank you. It's on. Okay. Uh, I remember you said that uh, you know the ghost realm and our the ghost space and our human space is in the same space but only on different dimension. But you also mentioned that uh, the ghosts will not harm us. How would you say that the ghosts can harm us because we are in a different dimension? They will not harm us. They will not harm us. Different dimension unless they want to take revenge or anything. Then they come to our dimension. Otherwise, they don't. Because you know what? One time, uh, I went with my friend. Uh, we went to Ajahn Brahm's retreat. Uh, last time. Uh, so, you know, that time, she, because every one of us was sleeping in a single room. And she, she sleep, because changed new bed, she couldn't sleep. So she turned here, turned there, turned there, turned there. Suddenly, you know, she turned. And then she saw another lady looking at her. Wow, she was so frightened to rush out from my room, from her room, and running into my room, and running into my room. I said, "Ah, wake me up!" So I say, "Okay, lah, let us go and see whether Ajahn Brahm wants to, to explain to you, long." Then Ajahn Brahm told us that, "Don't be afraid; they won't harm you." So Ajahn Brahm went to her room to do the chanting. It's very kind of him. So there's no way that the, the, the ghosts can do any harm to us, even though in our same dimension. Like bodily harm, take revenge. Can they do that? Sorry. Sorry. Uh, can they do something like do a bodily harm to us when they want to take revenge or when they're in our space itself? I don't think so, unless no, you and them... You, you and them, between you and them, you have very, very strong hatred. Like one of my friends, um, she was murdered by her adopted brother due to the property problem, uh, material wealth. And then she kept on appearing to us, but no use, because we told them, we told her we can't help. Because no, she said this one, and so we, at last, and she, 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 she appeared to several of us in the dream. Nah. Then one time she appeared on, to me, so I told her, if you want to show yourself in the police office and let the police know what happened, show them. And she really, during that time, you know, show her. Adopted brother was caught for murder. Murder, murder her. No, because we have the fears. That's why it becomes worse. Even they don't want to scare us, we scare ourselves. My question is like, you know, sometimes people uh, have dreams. Huh? So does the dream mean that uh, the person you dream is actually a, a ghost form, you know, coming to visit? Yeah. Yeah, some people have such a dream. And sometimes because you, you, you have very deep relationship with them and you miss them, so you can dream of them. Saying that you no, know, they come to you and ask this and that because sometimes you know, we do not do certain things and then we feel sorry to them. And this idea came to us we must do something for them. And then we thought that they come to our dream to ask for help. Okay.
they, they come and see, see, look, look, see, see, you know, look yes. at the young kids and so on. Yeah, they yeah. come and see. And yeah. then they, this is why, you know, when people say that uh, they pass away and within seven days, so the floor have full of ash. Huh? Then, no, they say, and on the seventh day, the night, and then the dead person will come back. And you will see the animal's uh, uh, footstep. And then you will see us two knives and say, oh, they are back. Why should we say that our relatives or our loved one become, when they die, they turn into ghosts? They may go to the heaven. They may go to the human realm. They may go to many places, not necessarily turn into ghosts. What? Very unfair like, to our loved one, no wonder, no? Sometimes in the dream, they come and scold us. Thank you, Dr. Ang. Sometimes it's our own imagination. Imagination. Yes. Because sometimes our eyes, our eyes, you look at this place, look at this. suddenly sometimes the eyes and the lights no, merge together, and you see certain illusion, and you think that, you know, ah, that is a ghost, that is what, 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 what. Maybe it's not. Mm. And because of our fears, together with that and com combination, make us feel that, oh, we see them. Mm. One more. Good afternoon, Doctor. I just would like to ask one question. Uh, there, there is a case where somebody passed away, then uh, following the uh, Theravada tradition, so didn't burn all those jaws paper. I can't hear you, ne, sorry. Because now I'm old, eh? my ears got problem. I went for my ENT doctor and the ENT doctor said that my ears got okay. problem. You can say louder? Okay. Oh, I just would like to know. The mic nearer to your mouth? Not the mic, okay. Okay, uh, doctor, I just would like to know that uh, there was a case when a person passed away, then following the uh, Theravada tradition, no burning of joss paper. Okay. Then uh, subsequently, this uh, deceased person uh, gave a dream to another person, a relative, said that uh, he has no money. And then <laughs> the other party quickly go and burn the joss paper for them. How is it? No, because the relative, probably the relative has the habits to burn the paper money. And this is why she, when she sees that during the funeral, they have no burning of paper money, so she feels very sorry for this chap. That's why how she dreamed of her. Dream of him or her. Like, I remember that, you know, one time, there was a, a story happened in China. And they said that one day, the husband, wanted to go to the father's graveyard during the uh, seven lunar month to burn the paper money. So she saw, he saw a whole, leg of, uh, a whole stack of paper money on the table. So he thought that the wife prepared, she, because he asked the wife to prepare for him. So he took it and then he looked at the paper money and he said, that, wow, now the paper money uh, made re like the real one. So he was very happy, brought the money and then burnt it in front of the father's graveyard. And at this juncture, then her, his phone, after he burnt, and his handphone ring. So he answered, the wife asked, did you see a stack of money on the table? Then he said, yes. I thought that you prepared for me, so I, I just burned it. Then his wife shouted, do you know that's a real one? <laughs> then he said, huh? I thought that you... You, 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 you brought the, 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 the paper money for fa father. Then his wife said, no, that one is on another table, not this table. Oh. Uh, then the, the wife said, I just brought the money out from the bank. Uh, I wanted to go and buy certain things. And then he said, no wonder, no, it looks like real. Oh. And after that, put down that phone and he was so upset that he burned so much money. So he cried at the graveyard. And when people passing by, people say, wow, this one is so filial pouty. <laughs> uh, cry so badly to the, to the father. And at night, he dreamed of the father. And the father came and tell him that, what type of fake money you burn for me? 
now I'm caught by the police here. I'm at the police station because of using the fake money. Okay. Any last question? No, uh, there is one, is it? Is there comic link with ghosts? Is there anything we could do for them if we encounter any? Yes. And then also, how do we deal with the fear? No, you just... Uh, I talked about the fear already, right? Then if you just do the chanting, transfer the marriage to them, that's the best. That's the best. And then you also build up good relationship with them. Uh, so, and then how to get rid of it? So if you do all the good things and you keep your five preset and you, you will bring up your positive energy. Once you have positive energy, you shouldn't have the fear because they won't come and gacha you. They also do not want to waste their energy to gacha out you. So you shouldn't feel very, mm, uh, very uh, frightened, very upset or anything. Just do the chanting, transfer the, the marriage to them, that's all. Especially Whether you burn the paper money, you burn the house or you burn anything. That one, because some people believe in that. This is why some people ask me, I know my mother wants to burn this, wants to burn that. Then I tell them that, you know, if they burn and they feel that they are ease, they are happy, let them do it. But tell them that, don't burn too much and burn the big notes instead of the small notes. Mm -hmm. uh, so when they go there, they can change. <laughs> uh, they can get a small change. Then they won't burn so many you know, and cause the, the air pollution. Mm. So, so they said the, the, the mother was happy and then she was happy. So I said, that's good. Uh, so this is why. Because some people feel that if they don't do it, they feel very uneasy especially for the old people. But not old people like me. Eh? We also was me chap there. Uh, uh. Those who are brought up in that tradition, the yeah. Chinese culture. Yeah, but some, they are, they are brought up in the traditional way. Then, because they hear, hear from here, hear from there, they also, you know, uh, they also not learn so much already. Uh, and then, this, this time, you know, the, the notes, eh? Also, look very much like ours. And at the center, they got the King of Yaman's photo. Mm, but I don't know how they know the King of Yaman look like. Uh, at first, I thought that they are going to use some, some you know, those uh, people's photo. Mm, but don't. The ancient people's photo, but no. Mm, quite interesting. Uh. No more last question. Okay, thank you so much, Dr. Ang. So thank before you. we uh, uh, do, we will introduce Dr. Ang's book. Um, pardon me, my my Chinese. Back to the <laughs> Hui. samsara. Hui dao shuo po shi jie. Back to the samsara. Okay, Hui so dao coming back to this world. Po shi jie. Uh, Hui dao shuo po shi jie. Shuo po shi jie is, uh, is samsara. This world. So it's a uh, Dr. Ang's uh, book on something about her her journey in Buddhism and uh, uh, her. Oh, I try to to use the um, daily life to explain to novels, but don't read it as a a, a real because no, novels story is in story form uh, to introduce the teaching of the Buddha. Uh, because you know, if sometimes if you use too serious words to introduce, people may not uh, be inter interested in it, uh, especially for those uh, who just come in to the Buddhist circle. Uh, they do not know, they do not understand. And you use this type of story form, then it will be easier for them to read. Uh, just like reading the Kung Fu story, and then they, uh, then they, they, they will know uh, what the Buddha teaching, uh, the Buddha's teaching. 
That's and uh, Dr. Ang has uh, kindly donated uh, some books uh, for um, donation to Buddhist Fellowship. So if any of you are interested, uh, do come to Buddhist Fellowship and, and uh, just uh, get a copy of her book. So this one is the, for, uh, if you take the book, I hope that you can do some donation to Buddhist Fellowship and we will be able to help the Buddhist Fellowship's activities. Oh, I will appreciate it. Mm. Sadhu, sadhu, sadhu. Okay. Some, some people ask me, do I have the English version? I say I'm waiting for one of you to do the translation. <laughs> okay, thank you so much, okay. Dr. Ang. Thank we shall you. end by transferring uh, merits to all okay. sentient beings. Ta vata cha amhehi sampadang punya sampadang sabbe deva anumodantu sabbe sampati siddhya Ta vata cha amhehi sampadang punya sampadang sabbe buta anumodantu Sabba Sampati Siddhya Itta Vata Cha Amhehi Sampadang Punya Sampadang Sabbe Satta Anumodantu Sabba Sampati Siddhya Let us dedicate the merits uh, to our departed relatives and friends. Idang me nya ti nang ho tu sukita hon tu nya tayo. Idang me nya ti nang ho tu sukita hon tu nya tayo. Idang me nya ti nang ho tu sukita hon tu nya tayo. Let us pay respects to the Triple Gem. Arahang Sama Sam Buddha Bhagawa Buddha Bhagawantang Abiwa Demi Swakato Bhagawata Dhammo Dhammang Namasami Sufatipano Bhagavato Sawaka Sango Sangang Namami Sadhu 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 We have a couple of announcements. On the 30th, uh, uh, the next uh, Sunday, um, Sister Sylvia Bay will be speaking about the Pingyani Sutta. So uh, do tune in for the live streaming. Okay, thank you so much, uh, brothers and sisters, for joining us. Sadu, sadu, sadu.